when talking about the Imperial Guard and Warhammer 40,000, it's very easy to look at them and draw them as a one-trick pony. A lot of people see them as meat for the meat grinder, and granted, for a lot of that, it's true. For the most part, on the other hand, the Guard is actually a pretty solid army on it in itself. Um, when you think of the Imperial Guard, a lot of the times what will come to mind is the Soviet strategy of only infantry. And while, yes, this is the case sometimes, a good... Eh, I don't want to say a majority, because it's not a majority. A solid faction of the Astra Militarum or Imperial Guard is just leagues and leagues above the rest. If you want cannon fodder, you go to some random hive world, you go pick up a couple of gangs, and you throw them on the front line, or you use a penal legion. If you actually need good troops, you'd go with, like, the Vestroyan, you'd go with the Cadians or the Katachan jungle fighters. Um, the Guard has so many different facets that they cover just about everything. The Cadians in particular are... They're not quite the best of the non-augmented or not very augmented people because there are the Lucifer Blacks, but I'm not entirely sure if those would fall into the Imperial Guard or not. The Guard in itself is essentially the hammer of the Empire. Everyone always says that the Astartes are the backbone of the Imperium or that they would fall without the Astartes, and yes, that's true. Uh, I forget exactly what book it said, but it is loosely quoted that the Imperium could survive a month without the Astartes, a week without the Mechanicus, and less than an hour without the Guard. The Imperial Guard, across thousands and thousands of worlds that you will never hear of, are just laying down millions and millions of bodies, millions and millions of shots of Laz fire. Another one of my favorite quotes is uh, in reference to the Laz rifle, where a Laz rifle on its own is nothing, but through a wall of combined and condensed fire, the Laz rifle can do just about anything. Um, back on the topic of the Guardsmen surviving 15 hours, if I'm not mistaken, that is from the War of Armageddon series, and in which that specific specific world of Armageddon which it's really Ulanor but Armageddon they had an estimated survival time of 15 hours that's not how it is across the entire Imperium if you are again some ganger from a hive world yeah you're probably going to be thrown on the front line just like cannon fodder you are going to be used just as the gum to you know stick up someone's tr their tank treads or jam into the barrel it I'd, I'd safely say 80% of the Imperial Guard is cannon fodder, but the other 20% is actually extremely well-trained. They are extremely well-equipped. Um, Katachan jungle fighters, for example, they don't even need commissars. It, with the Katachan, any time that they get a commissar and he starts getting a little too big for his britches, they just happen to disappear. But they are the one-off. The Cadians are some of the best Imperial Guard troops. I know best is kind of subjective, but they are the most well-rounded. They have armored brigades. They have um, air force. Like, from Cadia itself, any unit from Cadia is almost guaranteed to be the best Imperial Guard reach or regiment on the battlefield. Um, that being said, if Katachan are there, you know, it, it, Cadians are the jack-of-all-trade. If, if you need someone who, no matter what, is going to stand their ground and shoot no matter what, you get the Cadians. If you need to do some real impossible Rambo shit, you need to get yourself the Katachan Jungle Fighters. Or if you are, um, I'm pretty sure the Vestroyans are the paratroopers. But if you need, there's always something for you within the guard. And on top of that, you have the armaments of the guard. You think, okay, okay, taking it one step back, it's often quoted in 40k that the 
weapons and armor that the guardsmen are wearing is worth more than their lives. And for that 80% of the guard that is cannon fodder, yes, that's true. But when you compare it to the Cadians or the Katachan, who are extremely well equipped, extremely well trained, uh, countless, countless books entire battlefields have been saved because one of the Cadian regiments was just happening to train on one of those nearby worlds when shit hit the fan, and guess who came to mop everything up? Cadians are the true hero heroes of 40k. Maybe not anymore, but they were the backbone of the Imperial Guard. Back to the armaments, the Imperial Guard comes with howitzers, self-propelled artilleries, and stuff like that, as well as Bane Blades, Storm Blades, and other variants of the Lehman Rust tank. The Lehman Rust main battle tank is, I guess the best way to compare it to would be a modern weapons platform, where you would have like the base model M16 or the M4, which, you know, doesn't come with any bells and whistles, but you can customize it however you need to. If you are going into a really, really hectic fight where you need to just lay down fire, Bane blade. If you are, you know, hit and run, hit and run, maybe a storm blade, there is always something for you. And that brings us to the tabletop. Imperial Guard is, while being the most expensive without question, the most diverse faction on the tabletop. No matter what happens, you have enough bodies and enough firepower to take out just about anything. Each Guardman being two points really doesn't help. I, I don't know how many points they really are, but... The versatility and the fact that the Guard is just meant to be a bulwark. The, the Guard isn't meant to win, like, at, at any circumstance. The Guard is, we have a problem, we don't know if we can get someone else here to fix it. They are the first line of defense and the last. The Astartes might be the heroes of the setting, they might get all the books written about them, but for every one Astartes, there's a million to a billion guardsmen on some unheard of world throwing down Lazfire, and it, it it's sad not seeing them get the recognition they deserve, because they truly are the backbone of the setting. And uh, I, I guess the last thing that I'll say, nailing this one home, is... The Imperial Guard doesn't have a lifespan of 15 hours. That was that one engagement. And there are people who have it a lot worse than the Guardsmen. The Guardsmen aren't the first line of defense, if that makes sense. There, there's levels to it. You have like your local Arbides, who are like your police or your peacekeepers. And then you have the Planetary Defense Force, which is like your National Guard. And the, na or the Imperial Guard actually falls Behind, or in front of or behind the Imperial Guard uh, or <laughs> essentially once the Planetary Defense Force is wiped out, then the Guard gets called in, or they get called in to supplement depending on the situation and what it calls for as much as Astartes look down on normal Guardsmen normal Guardsmen look down on Planetary Defense Forces because they get a fraction of the training with significantly lower quality armament um, for every one story of a guardsman getting absolutely eviscerated, there's a thousand planetary defense forces who got the same exact treatment, but no recognition for it. But uh, yeah, that's it for the Imperial Guard. I hope this uh, changed your opinion, or at least that my incessant rambling didn't drive you mad. I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one.